Welcome to Jesus Inside Prison Ministry presents Jesus House with Dr. William Bumpus. We are providing a strong foundation in Christ and preparing men for a successful future. And now, here's Pastor Bumpus. Praise Jesus and welcome to today's program. I am your host, Pastor William Bumpus, and you're watching Jesus Inside Prison Ministry present Jesus House or JIPM present Jesus House. Uh, we come your way each week talking about prison ministry and uh, uh, reentry programs, how you can uh, start something like that and how, where men can come to once they are in, uh, out of prison. And so that's what we're going to be uh, talking about today. In fact, for the next uh, three or four weeks, I'm, be, I'm going to be doing a special here and I'm going to be doing some in-depth uh, instruction on how you could uh, start a residential reentry program. Whatever kind of program you want, I'm going to be discussing how you can do that uh, over the next four weeks and uh, I'm going to make those available. Now, if you want to just go on and somehow another tape it on here, wonderful. But if not, we are going to make those as a digital download somewhere in the future. Amen. Uh, but right now, that's what we're going to be uh, going into for the next four sessions. So you might want to tell somebody. Now, as before I get started, let me say uh, to chaplains uh, anywhere in America, if you need any of my books, uh, feel free to write or uh, send me an email, go on my website, and we'll be glad to send you uh, uh, Christian literature, uh, my books, amen, that you can use in your prison. They are absolutely free. Uh, to chaplains uh, all over America and uh, feel free to write in. In fact, there was a chaplain uh, that uh, uh, he didn't hear about it through this. He heard about it from another inmate. Uh, in fact, uh, now he was um, uh, it's a prison down in uh, Mississippi called down in Woodville, Mississippi. Uh, and uh, uh, this, this chaplain, uh, he, had, he somehow another inmate, that's how most of us usually start, uh, or, you know, everything is supply and demand, even where prison ministry is concerned, especially where our ministry is concerned. A lot of inmates hear about us through my books or whatever. Then they contact their chaplain, amen, and uh, said, uh, uh, contact the chaplain about maybe us coming in. Well, this is what happened here. So this chap, this guy contacted the uh, chaplain. Now I'm getting ready to say something. So I hope you don't get offended, but I know you want the truth, amen. And so this guy contacted the chaplain because he had one of my books. And so the chaplain wrote, uh, contacted me uh, by email and said, man, said, uh, please give me a call. So I gave him a call and he said, some inmate gave me a copy of your book. And uh, he said, man, you are answer to prayer. He said, uh, like I said, don't get nervous now. He said, I'm a black chaplain. And he said, we got over 900 men in this prison here, which is a maximum security prison. And he said, and so the majority of these guys here are black. He said, and we have been all, had all kind of trouble trying to find uh, literature from a black ex-convict that's born again. And I got your book. And so he says, so uh, I, I'm calling to let you know we, we could use some of your books down here. How much of a donation uh, would we have to send in order to get some of your books? So he was shocked. I said, uh, I said they're free. He, he said, what? I said, yes, they're free. He said, man, I, well, we could show use them. He said, now, I ain't expecting you to send 900 of them but we could use whatever you could send. Well, of course, I got thousands of them. And so I went on and got about 800 of my books together. Uh, they come in cases of 72. And I shipped them off, but I also shipped off some of my tracks in there, which is called Blind, Blind No More. Now, uh, all of this that I'm talking about, what, about my books and all that, that'll be coming up at the end of the program so that you can get that information. So this program is going to give you plenty of time to go get uh, some information, pencil, paper, whatever, so you can write down the e my email address, my website, so you can get a copy of all these books that I'm talking about. Well, anyway, so I sent those books in and I sent in uh, some of my uh, Blind No More tracks. Well, next thing I know, y'all saying the chaplain called me. He said, man, uh, those books has caused a major explosion here in this prison. He's all these guys, man, they want them, they, the cartoon, man, would just, you know, just blew them away. And he said, so uh, 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 we got to get you down here. Uh, he said, how much, was it, <laughs> how much will it cost us uh, to, to, what is your fee to come in here? I said, free. Again, he was shocked. 
And uh, so I told him it's free. I told him, I told him he said, I said, no, we don't need, I don't need no help with, uh, with uh, housing. You know, it, it, you know they, they, uh, he uh, vowed, you know, saying to, not vowed, but said that we can help you with your housing. I told him we don't need none of that. You know, JIP and my ministry supplies all that for me and my team that comes in with me, I do have some guys that go with me. They all pay their own way. This is our way of giving. The Bible said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together and running over. So that's our ministry. And so it ain't no charge for that. And man, he was blown away so, so much so that we're set to go in there January of 2021. We're set to go in there, you understand, and do uh, three services, uh, starting off three services. It's going to be a powerful thing. In fact, the chaplain even said, now, for those in prison, to know this is a rarity. The chaplain even said, would you be available to sign your copies of your book? I said, of course. He said, well, of course, you know, we're going to have some camera people there and they're going to take pictures. I mean, man, all of that started by sending free books into a prison. That's what these books do, does. God has really anointed uh, th those books. Amen. And it really makes an impact on the prison. Amen. Uh, this right here, I feel like would bless you as well. Uh, this is a letter that I just recently received. And uh, this guy says right here, uh, this is my newsletter for those that are looking. Now, you can get this free newsletter every month. It comes like this here, absolutely free. All you got to do is let me know that you want it. Uh, and I send it out, you know, saying to everybody on my mailing list, free of charge. We, we don't be making no appeal for no money or anything. It's just a way of letting you know what we're doing. But this guy here wrote, he said to Mr. William Bumford, I just finished reading a track, a, a track about your life called Blind No More. And it really hit me in the heart because I could really relate to what you went through in your life and how you grew up under very similar circumstances as I did. I wanted to thank you for putting this track together and I will definitely be sharing it with the brothers, here, with the brothers in here. By the way, I'm a death row inmate at San Quentin State Prison in California. Now this right here just really, really, really blessed me. How did he get the track? Uh, well, I know this. Is, I know uh, a, a, a gentleman, you understand, that's seen this program, uh, and he wrote for some of the tracks. I sent him some of those tracks, and so he has a ministry, you understand, ministering to convicts. And so that's how he got that uh, track. In fact, the inmate let me know uh, how, who, who sent him that track. Of course, I didn't put it in the, in the letter here, uh, in my newsletter. But that's how he got that track through another prison ministry, that was his ministry, writing to ex-convicts, and he got a hold of that track. Now he was, he told me, asked me, he wanted me to send him a bunch of them. He's gonna be sharing them all over death row and all over the prison, and, and of course, I did send him a package, amen? So that's what we do here at JIPM. Uh, uh, that's, part, that's our prison ministry, that's what we do. We go inside prison, we supply books and, uh, and all that, amen, to help uh, convicts, you understand, know uh, get, uh, relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, the number one, I think I kind of mentioned on this last, uh, last month, I was talking about uh, the five priorities that we teach at the Jesus house. And, I, and, I, and now, I want to say this, I think I might have said it uh, last month, but I'm going to say that because I'm setting up what we're going to be talking about all this month. There's great reentry programs. Uh, <clears throat> and there are programs, like every prison now, has uh, a reentry coordinator. In every prison now, when you get close to getting out of prison, when the inmate get close to getting out of prison, they go into what they call reentry. That's a program there. That's a class where uh, a, a person teaches those men how to get their driver's license, you know, I mean, how to get their ID, you know, and all that, why they're in prison, how to get their social security card, all that information. They teach them that in the reentry classes in prison. And all that sounds wonderful, but there's a major, major, major component that's missing. And that component is residential, where they're going to live at. That's the major component. Uh, yes, you can tell them where they can go to get some food. You can tell them where they can go get some clothes. Uh, you can tell them, you understand, where they can go, uh, you know, and, and seek some employment. But you can't get no employment, and you can't cook no food, and you can't dress yourself, take a shower and all that, if you don't have a place to live. So what happens is, most guys come out of prison, don't have a place to live. 
uh, if they do have a place to live, it's not a safe place. I think I ministered about that uh, last month. They don't have a safe place to live. Uh, they got to go home to, they got to go wherever they are accepted. So if they got a family member that will accept them uh, on parole, uh, most people come out on parole. If they got a family member to accept them, well, they come into that environment. We don't know how that environment is. Usually it's the same kind of environment they left from, especially if they're born again. If they're born again, you know what I'm saying? They got to come in, back into an environment where nobody in the house is saved and ain't nobody living for God. So they got to come into that environment and try to maintain without committing any crime. So they either got to come there or they got to go to the mission. Uh, and most of them don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of drama there. So what else are they going to do? So as a result, there's, ma there's mass pressure on anyone coming out of a reentry program, coming out of a prison or, or a boys school or any other kind of program. There's major problem on where do I find a place to live, a residential program. And so people have asked me over the years, we've been doing this now. I've been having a, a Jesus house or reentry program, residential program now, you know, for over 25 years. And uh, I think it's more than that, but I'm just guesstimating. I've been doing this 42 years. So we've always had a place for guys to come once they come out of prison. So I've been doing this a while. And as a result of that, I have learned some stuff. And people all over the country uh, inside prison, when I go inside prison, meet volunteers in those states, preaching churches and everything, they always ask, how do you start a uh, reentry program? And so it takes me a while to tell them and I can't get it all in in a few minutes. So I wrote a book about it, uh, but then the book, you understand, I just kind of hit the highlights, so I don't go into detail on the book, but the book is available called Jesus House. But, the, but on these programs here going forward, I'm going to be going into more detail so that uh, this right here will be available for anybody that wants anything like this. Uh, the, why is that? There is a great need for guys, for anybody, women, coming out of prison to have a place to stay. And there's numerous people who want to do it. They just don't know how. And so the Lord taught me how. And so I'm going to teach you uh, on how to open up a reentry program. Now, as I wrote in my book uh, called Jesus House, uh, and, I, and I, I, I put this in here, uh, if you are planning on opening up a residential facility and you will be seeking financial support, public or federal or state grants, you must become a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. That's where it starts at. Uh, do not just go and get no house. I've, I've heard a lot of people, they don't, they don't research anything, uh, and they think they got a plan. So I was recently down in um, Fort Wayne, and I, uh, recently I was uh, teaching uh, in a substance abuse class, and there were several guys in that class, and they said, man, you know, one guy said, man, I got some property, you know what I mean, and, and, I, and I, I, I want to open it up for a, a reentry program and all that. Well, I didn't have too much time, because this was after I, I spoke, and I didn't have too much time, you know, to, to explain to him what I'm getting ready to share now. So I asked him to write for the book. I don't know what he did or not, but I did send some books in to my sponsor in that area there, you understand, so that uh, she could get those books to, the, to that class. So that's how a lot of people are thinking. They're thinking, well, okay, I'm just going to get a house, you know what I mean, and I'll go on and uh, convert that house, you understand, know into a uh, place for men to come out of prison, all women, you understand know what I'm saying, and then they run into all kinds of roadblocks, and then they want to get mad at the city. Don't get nervous, it's going to preach very good. They want to get mad at everybody else. They want to get mad at the neighborhood. Well, the reason why, you didn't do your homework first. And the reason why you didn't do your homework first, you didn't know how. So that's what I'm going to teach you uh, on these sessions, how to do it. What you, should, what you should do first, before you spend all that money, amen, investing in a house, remodeling the house and everything for somebody to stay, and then get them in there, and the city said, you're, you're not zoned right. You got to close it down. Or you lease some property. Some people, I've known people, you know, their heart was in the right place, and they have went on and, and rented something, you know what I mean, or leased a building, you know, just knowing that it's going to work out, and it never did work out. And then they wind up, you understand, with a lot of bills, you understand, and a disastrous program. So let me say from the start, and this usually stops a whole lot of people, if you're serious about it, and you're going to start a reentry program, a residential program, any kind, 
and you're going to be soliciting support, private, public, or federal support, grants and all that, you must be a 501c3 organization. First thing they're going to ask you, amen, you understand what I'm saying? When you ask, you know me, I'm trying to do this, could you donate to my ministry, whatever, uh, they're going to ask you, you understand, are you a 501c3, are you a 501c3? Uh, if you're not, that's the end of the story. You don't get nothing else. And you are not going to be able to uh, operate a residential program without a 501c3 uh, unless, you understand, you already got a whole lot of money. Now, if you ain't got a whole lot of money, amen, then you're going to have to ha be a 501c3. Now, you could get an attorney uh, and they will file that 501c3 for you. However, I'm going to do it right here and ain't going to charge you nothing. I'm going to tell you how to do it. Uh, and <laughs> I know how to do it because I learned. Just how I learned. I came out of prison, as you also know, uh, in 78 with the vision for what I'm doing now. God, Jesus, came into my cell, walked into my cell literally in Michigan City. I always tell folk, a cell house on the third floor. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody there but inmates. Amen. And I'm laying across my bunk and I went, I had an experience like Peter did. And I went into a trance, this is in the morning. I'm, I'm laying across my bed. Uh, I just got through working in the kitchen that morning. I was getting waiting for all the, the lines to work, work lines to go to work. And then I was gonna go out on the yard and meet with some of the other brothers, young know, from different cell blocks so we can have Bible study. And so I just came into my cell. I laid across my bunk just to rest a little bit. And all of a sudden the ceiling opened up. I went into a trance and I seen myself seen it like a mini uh, newsreel, and I seen myself traveling all over the world. I seen myself on cover of TVs and cover of magazines and all that in a moment of time. And at the same time, Jesus stood at my door and said, go out and build me a prison ministry. Now that's how my ministry began. So when I left prison, I knew what I was supposed to do. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know nobody that was doing anything like that. Several people who I talked to, I remember uh, I was teaching a class <laughs> just yesterday uh, at my uh, men's class uh, at my church and I was going to, and I went into the book of Galatians where Paul said that after Paul was saved, Paul said after he got born again, he said immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. That's Galatians chapter three. You know, uh, uh, chapter one, he didn't refer, in other words, he didn't, he said, and then three years later, after he uh, was sure of his call, three day, three years later, three day, yeah, three years later, then he went up and talked to Peter and them for a little while. Then he went back out, off into Arabia and 14 years later, he came back and met with all of the church council, but he had two converts with him by that time, Barnabas and Titus, amen, which verified his ministry. I heard a uh, 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 great, uh, a uh, teacher, you understand, one of the, one of the uh, fathers of my ministry, you understand, which was Oral Roberts, uh, and, I, and he talked to Kenneth Copeland, I heard Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland say the same thing, and Oral Roberts told Kenneth, he said that number one, find out the will of God for your life, number two, do not confer with flesh and blood, and number three, get it done at all costs. And so I had that call on my life, I didn't know about that, I went to the church I was going to and everybody else, nobody knew what I was talking about. Nobody had a clue. They didn't have to know how to start no uh, uh, Jesus house. Not, 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 I wouldn't even think about Jesus house then, but how to start a prison ministry. Didn't have a clue. But I ran across one guy, and this guy was a uh, minister, uh, had a real small church, four or five people. Uh, and, uh, that's how the Bible said, do not despise small beginnings. He had four or five people in his church, but at one time, he had uh, a, a large youth program in the city of Indianapolis, and he knew about federal grants and all that kind of stuff. I didn't have a clue. And he told me, he said, here's what you need to do. He said, if you're gonna start a prison ministry, you need to have a 501c3. This is how I learned, this is how I'm teaching you. I said, what is that? So he told me what that was. I didn't know, that. so you know what I did? I did what inmates do. You know, I went to the public library, I could read, and I got out the legal books there and I looked up 501c3, how you do that. I read that and I found out what I had to do. And I went on as a result of that and got Jesus uh, Inside Prison Incorporated in 1981 just by reading that. And of course, it has been a tremendous blessing to us. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing today if we did not have that 501c3. So in order to have a 501c3, you could get an attorney, but even before that, 
Now here it is right here. You have to have a board of directors. In other words, you got to have three, four, five, six, seven people on your board, 20, what you can make your board as long as you want to, that's, that's up to you. I would investigate it first. But before you do that, you have to have a board because before you can apply for your 501c3, you must have a board and you must go to the state office building or get it online now and file for your articles of incorporations. Your articles of incorporation is the organizing documents of your ministry, amen, or your 501c3. So you get your articles of incorporation. In your articles of incorporation, there's a spot in there that says the purpose of your existence. That's where you put what you want to do, what your ministry is going to be about. That determines whether it's going to be a nonprofit or not. Really, that conversation is held between you and your board members, whatever board members y'all got. Y'all need to discuss what type of ministry are we going to, are we going to do uh, before you uh, do your articles of incorporation. Are y'all going to be ministering to women? Are y'all going to be ministering to men? Are y'all going to be ministering to men coming out of prison? Are y'all going to be ministering to uh, women coming out of prison? Are you going to be ministering to men and women, you understand, together? Are you, going to, are you going to be ministering to men off the street? So you have to determine all of that who you're going to minister to before you put your organizing documents together. Before you put your articles of incorporation together, you needed to get all that together because that's what, everything is based on what you put in your articles of incorporation. Now, once you get your articles of incorporation, your board together, and y'all decide what type of ministry or what type of residential program you're going to have and the people you're going to serve, then you take, the, the, then you file those articles of incorporation with your state. This is all across the country. You file those articles of incorporation with your state, and then from there, you take that document that has been uh, 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 certified by the state, you take that document, and then with that, you can file your 501c3. Your 501c3 will ask for information that's on your articles of incorporation. So if you ain't got no articles of incorporation, no 501c3. So that's how you do that. Now. Uh, we're beginning to wrap up on this first section. Now, a 501c3, let me help you out because, you know, people just don't know because I didn't know. You hear it's a 501c3 not-for-profit. So you think, well, man, I want to have a profit-making business. Right. You can do that. Uh, in a non-profit, you can pay, if someone's working in that non-profit and they're working, you can pay them a salary. Amen. If they're working, so it ain't like you don't, you, you can't get no money. Now, if you're working a, a job, I mean, you're working at, uh, in that nonprofit, you're the secretary, you're the president, you're working. You, I mean, you ain't just got no title, but you're putting in 40 hours. Then the Bible says the labor's worthy of his hire. Amen. And the federal government says the labor's worthy of his hire as well. So therefore you can pay uh, that individual that's working in that nonprofit, amen, you can pay them a decent wage, amen? Uh, so it ain't like, you understand, you can't, uh, uh, can't hire nobody and all that kind of stuff. But everything you do has to be targeted towards uh, your primary purpose, and that primary purpose should be in your uh, articles of incorporation. So in order to get started, let me say, uh, before you think about going out and buying a house, before you think about leasing something for reentry, whatever, number one, you need to get you get your, first of all get the revelation from God on what He wants you to do. Who is it that God wants you to serve? Don't let nobody else tell you. You know what I'm saying? Who is it that you feel like God wants you to serve? Uh, women coming out of prison, men, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Youth, whatever. You figure it out. Now, once you do that, then you get you a board. Talk to some people. You know what I'm saying? That's in line with your vision. See, uh, you ain't there to help their vision. They're there to help your vision. So you want to talk to people that understand what God had told you to do, and they're, uh, they're willing to help come alongside, be board members to help you do what God had called you to do. You don't want nobody in there that want to take your idea and take over. Amen. So you want them to uh, 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 be uh, 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 a component of what God had told you to do because it's God's revelation. See, Jesus inside prison ministry is not by revelation. Jesus inside prison ministry did not come out of my mind, did not come out of my spirit. Jesus inside prison ministry came from God. Jesus' house came from God. God's the one who told me to do it. You know what I'm talking about? Then he gave me uh, the, the, the wisdom, amen, to get it done. But it's only because, it only called because I continued to pray with him, pray about it, and God began to lead and guide me and direct my step. He directed me to the board members that I have. 
I have excellent board members now. He, could, he directed me towards them. Uh, in the past, I have had some bad ones, a bad, but I've learned over the years how to do it right. Uh, and so I'm telling you now how to do it right so you don't make some mistakes that I did earlier. Uh, you know, earlier I had a board man and, and I looked up yesterday in one year, uh, the board members had drafted some paperwork and if I couldn't read, they had taken over my ministry. They had had it, I mean, they had taken it over. Uh, the only thing, they put a clause in there where they messed up. I was reading it, see, they, they forgot I could read and I was reading it and they said, all officers will serve for a year. Well, I'm the only one that had access to the prisons, so they couldn't be working with no convicts if they couldn't get in. So I never did let them get in. So after a year, they all quit, amen. And then I went on and set up uh, the right kind of board, amen, with people, you understand, that, was, that understood the vision that God gave me, and they came on board to help me do what God had called me to do. So you need a board. Number one, you need a board. Number two, Y'all got to get your articles of incorporations. You file that with your state. Then after that, you get your 501c3. And then after that, you understand, you're almost ready to get started. And so I'm gonna stop right here. I don't wanna give you too much. And we're gonna pick up from here next week. Uh, so uh, you definitely wanna tell somebody, amen, if you, if, uh, uh, so they can come in. I got three or four more steps to go, amen. But I guarantee if you get this information, uh, you will be able to go and start a group home, whatever kind of facility you want. It won't be hard to do. It'll, it'll be real easy to do. And you can help these men and women coming out of prison and young people because they definitely need a place to go, amen, in order to get on their feet and live a life for Christ and not go back into crime. Thanks for watching today. Uh, I'm, we're going to cut it off right here. Uh, at the end of the program, they will be showing you uh, my book offer for this, this month. Feel free to write in for those. Uh, and we'll be back here next week at the same time. So I'll see you next week. God bless. Jesus House Book. People ask all the time, how do I start a reentry program? Where I get the money at? Where I get the food? Where I get the clothes? That's what this book is all about. Jesus House will teach you how to open up any kind of program, any kind of reentry program, a work release program, a program for youth, whatever kind of facility that you want to open up, Jesus House will give you the A, B, and C's of opening up any kind of program. So make sure you get your copy today. Thank you for watching Jesus Inside Prison Ministry presents Jesus House with Dr. William Bumpus. To learn more about the Jesus House, to receive books by Pastor Bumpus, subscribe to our podcast, and to support Jesus Inside Prison Ministry, log on to www.jipm.org.